Good afternoon, sirs. I am Pratap. I am doing my final year engineering, and I want to ask Mr. Yusuf a question. Um, I really want to know if Islam is the only way for our salvation. I, um, let's consider two cases, sir. Uh, in the first case, let us take a Muslim, a very pious person who does prayers five times a day, and he is really good. He does good to the society and all that, and he lives a very normal life, and he dies. Not many people know about him. And, and be sure that he's going to reach him. Am I right? Go ahead. You tell me. Sure. Yeah. Then we'll take the case of people like uh, Gandhiji or Mother Teresa. And they are not Muslims. And they, they have lived such a precious life. And what is their fate? And I hope even they end up in heaven. So my question is, is Islam the only way for our salvation? Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, salam. Uh, What's your name? Chandran. Huh? Pratap Chandran. I'm a Hindu. Okay. Well, anyway, you're welcome and thank you for a good question. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. All right. First of all, you use the word in Arabic language. You speak Arabic? You can just shake no. your head. I don't need to. I don't need your, just. You don't speak Arabic. Okay. okay. Do you know what Aslam means? Taslim? Salam. No, okay. So when you use a word and you don't know what it means, it wouldn't be fair for me to give you an answer in Arabic, would it? Because my answer in Arabic is naam. Naam. Now what does that mean? And what am I answering? And you don't have a clue. So is it okay with you if I translate some words so you know better what I'm saying? Is everybody accepting that, right? What is Islam? Do you think Islam is like Hinduism? Do you think it's like Christianity? Do you think it's like Judaism, Buddhism, Taoism? Huh? It's not. Because it's a verb. As well as being a noun, it's a verb. What's a verb? Action. Something you do. It describes what you're doing. Got me? What is it based on? A root. sa la ma Sum. From this root sum, we do have all the other words that I just mentioned to you. A lot of Muslims make the mistake of saying, Islam is peace, man. Islam is peace. But it's not. Because when we greet each other, we don't say, Islam alaikum. We say, Salam alaikum. Right? Or wrong. So what is Islam? We talked about it in another program, but I'll give it to you again. Islam means something. It's action. I'm going to give you five of the things to think about. Surrender. Somebody pulls a gun on you. Surrender. Submit. You're going to have to do something now. Huh? Obey. Sincere. You have to do the, these things in sincerity. And peace. And it's action pointing in a direction without mentioning the subject. Action pointing. If I said to you, go, go, I don't, I don't move. I just say go. What do I want? I want you to leave. If I say come, come, what am I saying to you? Come on. I don't have to give you everything. I don't have to say, I want you to come to me. I can just say come. All right? Make sense? Okay. Islam. Islam. I'm telling you to do something. Islam. It's Islam, man. You're going, I don't get it. It's because it's in Arabic. But if I say to you, submit. Oh, okay, yeah. Surrender. Okay, what do you want? I give up. Obey. All right, I'll do it. But do it sincerely. Mm, that's the hard part. And do it in peace. Oh, my God, you really make it tough. Because that's what it's about. And it implies and points to the direction of who? Allah. Allah. Not to me, not to a government, not to a nation, not to an ism, but to Allah. To do what? Do what God wants you to do. Huh? Do you agree that a human being should not make up his own religion and tell God to accept it? Do you agree with that idea? Do you agree that if God shows you a way to go, that you should take that over some man-made way? Yes or no? 
Do you agree that a human being should submit, surrender, obey God on his terms sincerely and in peace? Do you believe it, yes or no? Well, see, you're already saying, I like Islam, and you didn't know that. Now, maybe you don't like some Muslims, and guess what? There's some I don't like either. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that I don't like Islam. In fact, if I don't like Islam, I'm saying I don't want to do what God wants me to do. Mm hmm? Mm hmm? Hey, we have any Christians with us today? Don't be afraid. We're not going to hurt you, I promise. Any Christians? Any, even one? You don't have to come up here. Just, just want to know if you're here. Okay. Relax. Relax. Any other Christians? Just want to know if you're here. Just one? Ooh, two. Okay. We got a couple Christians. Christians will tell you they know something about the Bible usually. And by the way, do we have any Hindus that know something about the Bible? Any Hindus know about the Bible? Any Muslims know about the Bible? Wow, more Muslims know about the Bible than all the other people here. Well, that's pretty good. <laughs> I like that. But anyway, this is, we're just doing question and answer. I'm, I'm going to hurry up. I want you to think about this. There's a passage in the Bible, in the New Testament. Testament meaning that you bear witness, testify to something. And in this Testament, this New Testament, it says that someone named Jesus or Asa told the people how to pray. And a beautiful part of that prayer says, God, I want your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Any Christian here ever heard that before? Please raise your hand. You heard it? God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven? Oh, you didn't read your book. Well, it's there. It's actually in two places in the New Testament in the Gospels. God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And what does that mean? That means Islam. That means Islam. That's what it's talking about. According to the book that still exists today, it tells them that Jesus did not cancel any of the Old Testament. In fact, he was specific about that, that he doesn't cancel the Torah or Old Testament. It says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, 18, and 19, Think not, don't think that I came to destroy the Torah, the Old Testament, the law. They call it law in English. I did not come destroy the law and the prophets, their teachings, but rather to fulfill, and not until all things are accomplished, shall a single dot, jot, or iota be in any wise lessened from the law. Whoever breaks the least commandment, listen to me, whoever breaks the least commandment, the least, and teaches this, he's going to be the least in the kingdom. But whoever keeps the commandments and teaches this, he'll be the highest in the kingdom. Establish regular worship, the Salah, and pay the charity, the Zakah. And this is the religion of Allah, most clear. So, I'm going to ask you now, and I want you to think. You mentioned Gandhi. He's a nice guy. Did you know that he said very good things about the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam? It's on my website, islamtomorrow.com. I couldn't help it. I had to put it in there one more time. It talks about the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, and Gandhi is a big endorser of Muhammad, and he's talking about him as being a great religious teacher and that his religion of Islam is good. So if you're a Hindu, you should listen to Gandhi and see what he said about Muhammad wasallam. And if you know anything about Mother Teresa, you know that she was kicked out of the Catholic Church because she didn't follow them, but rather she was trying to follow what she thought God wanted her to do. So if these people knew there was one God and they worshipped him on his terms, who's the judge? Allah. And it's up to him to judge him, not me. And they're already dead. So what would be the benefit for me to slander somebody who's already dead? 
Maybe they have a chance, maybe they don't, but there's no benefit for me here today to talk about somebody that's dead. I want to talk to these people out here that are still alive before they're dead. And let's worry about us today, what we need to do to be servants of Almighty God. And you heard the message tonight, regardless of what the people before us heard or didn't hear, you heard it. There's a God. And He has a religion for you, and if you don't want it, then it's between you and Him, not you and me. It's up to you. If you want it, you're going to have to ask Him for it. That's the only way it's going to come. May Allah guide all of us. I mean. I would just like to add, uh, the question uh, you were asking about whether there is just one religion, uh, from another perspective, if we agree that there is just really one God, even in Hinduism, in spite of the other trinities and Shiva and all these other things that are there, there is a basic belief in Brahman, the one absolute God. And this is something which all human beings around the world, with the exception of the few atheists, right, uh, all human beings around the world believe in that there is one supreme being, right? And that is the norm for human society. So we'll say that the, ex the atheists are abnormal. They're not normal. Although they tend to look at the rest of us as being abnormal, but really they're the minority, the abnormal ones. Huh? But there is this belief in one God. And this one God created one human race. One human race. Yeah, we've been told that there are, you know, different races. There's the Caucasian race, there's the Negroid race, there's the Caucasoid race, there's, the, you know, a variety of different Mongoloid race, all this kind. Of, but this is something made up. There's only one human race. And God has left a sign amongst us to prove it to us. In that, if Brother Yusuf needed a transfusion, and he is among the whitest of the white, from the Caucasoid race, okay? okay? Be positive. He needed be positive. The rest of his family are O. O negative, O positive, but he needs B positive blood. I have B positive blood. Really? <laughs> and what what color is it? <laughs> the same red as yours. You're right. <laughs> and the point is that only my blood can save him, even though his family, the rest of the family are not B positive. This is among the signs that God has left for us. So technically speaking, I'm closer to him than his own family, who look like him. Look more like him than I. So there's only one human race. One God, one human race. Then what? God conveyed his will to human beings. He taught them a way of life because he didn't create them and leave them to find it out themselves otherwise there would be chaos confusion and nobody or very few people would ever find their way so he sent messengers and conveyed to them what he wanted from